and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for some Golgari aggro. We're playing this deck again. We're going to be playing it in Mythic Best of Three. Y'all remember this from Monday, from Best of One Day Monday. Uh, this is a, a viewer submitted deck from then that was just, that did really well for us and it looked really impressive. And uh, I know a lot of y'all over on YouTube in the comments like the deck and you wanted to see it in Best of Three. So that's what we're going to be doing here. We're going to be trying to rank up with it, see how it does. We'll be playing five matches. Uh, but yeah, this is just, you know, aggressive deck taking advantage of some very large creatures with Rotting Regisaur, Lovestruck Beast, Questing Beast, trying to play these large creatures and enable the Great Henge to be played at a, a much reduced cost because of the large creatures. And of course, Vivian Arcbow Rangers, um, one of my favorite Planeswalkers in Standard. Uh, just you know, can be a removal spell if we need it, but then also just allowing these large creatures to trample over little kitty cats and other blockers. So let's give it a try. Um, if if you missed it on Monday and you want to check check us out playing on on Monday, of course you go to the video tab. Uh, you can find it, or you can go to the best of one playlist and you can find it there. And now have a regular standard playlist to start adding all these things back. Yay, France here. Thank, thanks, chat. Thanks for helping Fran TKT. Yeah, Vivian's just a really, really solid card. And I I really liked a Johnny Ad Adversary of Tyrants. Y'all Y'all remember how much I played that card. You know, just adding counters to creatures, and Vivian gets to do that also. I think Vivian would see a ton more play if, it, if Vivian was, like, 2GG instead of 1GGG. All right, every time you play this deck, you get matched up against Gruul. All right, we'll see if we get paired against Gruul here. I wish we were on the play with this. But we're not going to mulligan it. Hey, Mountain Wind Cat. Reseven for eight months. Thanks for that resub. So thanks for everything. Watching your streams really helped me improve. I'm loving the Boros aggro deck at the moment. Awesome. Give me sub number 12 on the day. So, Rotting Regisaur can trample over stuff with the help of Vivian. I think we just play it right now and not play the Innkeeper because of Mayhem Devil. We'll just discard Swamp. Could discard Temple. The worst case scenario always when you play Rotting Regisaur is they have instant speed removal, which it looks like that may be the case here. I'm gonna put a counter on both things. I love everything from deer to dinosaurs. From druids to dinosaurs? Is that what you said? I think that's what Vivian said. Love everything from druids to dinosaurs. My, my, how you've grown.
<laughs> yeah, no, deer to dinos. It should have been druid to dinos. Keep with the Murderous Rider to try to kill the Mayhem Devil, of course, because Mayhem Devil is an annoyance on these things. They do get to sacrifice their Mayhem Devil and get rid of my Murderous Rider for good, so I don't get the, the free 2-3, like how my opponent is getting free 2-3s. Never mind. I do get the free 2 3. Okay. I guess they want me to lose two life. Hmm. And they probably just forgot to do that. Foulmire Knight. Foulmire Knight. Darn. They did not fight Foulmire Knight. Oh, they got the Trailer Chrome's engine. This could be tough. We have the Edgewall Innkeeper engine. But that's just basically just draw one card right now. Hmm. What if I attack with Foulmire Knight? Got some damage in. I mean, I wizzy, that's that's the all right, so I always said it's crazy how people misplay with the oven deck and still have a chance. It's so strong of a deck. I mean that's that happens with every deck in magic. Like that's that happens all the time. Like you people misplay with lots of stuff and still have a chance. That's not really a unique aspect of this John Sacrifice deck. Civilization has crept too far. Tear it down. Not sure what I want to do here. Do I think I want to minus five for? Not really. I 
think I want to kill the goose. We're gonna tear you apart. I think the goose can just help a whole lot, make you know, making more food, and you know, the goose hacking a food by itself and adding a mana. I just think the the goose can just do a whole lot for him. Good draw. A little surprised I didn't just kill the Edgewall Innkeeper. I don't know what the Rotting Register was supposed to do against the Cauldron Familiar and a Wicked Wolf. We, of course, need to find the Great Henge. We can't really... Like, we need the Great Henge to help us compete with cards with, with Trailer Crumbs. Otherwise, that's what we're searching for. Yeah, Ab Abzan Hero that we just played. That, that, that deck features Garrick, if you want a Garrick deck. Why not swift end first? Because the witch's oven makes it difficult to swift end. I could, of course, wait for them to tap the witch's oven and then swift end like the murderous rider. But I tried just drawing. Well, we can continue going on here, but this game's over. Trailer Crumbs with all this mana and double Witch's Oven, Cauldron Familiar. This game's over. It's a lot of cards that I'm cutting, or that I'm bringing, that I want to bring in. Which means we'd have to cut a lot of cards. Riding Registor is only good if we have Vivian or if they do not have Cauldron Familiar Witch's Oven. Marcus is good at turning on our Great Henge. Uh, it's in there. Go to the, the deck from today. With abs that says abs and hero. Any win against cat food? We haven't lost to the cat food today with with the other decks. This is our very first match with this deck. I'm pretty sure we're undefeated against it in the other decks. I think we're three zero on the day against a, the deck. If I cut Foulmire Knight, which definitely looks like the worst card, do we still have enough for Edgewall Innkeeper and or Lovestruck Beast? I like Order of Midnight. That card's good. Taking out a couple Paradise Druids. Hey, Big Swanky. Thanks for the brand new Twitch Prime sub. Welcome to the channel.
I think we have to keep all the riders because Corvold just kills you so fast. I think you have to have rider because of Corvold. Like, you know, like we only have four riders in the deck. I, I just think you have to keep it. And plus, you know, it's a, still it triggers Edgewall in Keeper and everything. Like it's, I don't think you can cut Murderous Rider. We got an extra one though. Just cycle one away and play a 2 3. <clears throat> Vivian's an awesome draw. If our Paradise Druid stays alive and we can play it, we can grow this Murderous Rider. And. Oh gosh, that's a good draw too, though. If we can grow the Murderous Rider to be able to play the Great Henge. I think we have to do this, though. So just get everything. My, my. How you've grown. Get everything out of range of Masker Girl. And they can't they can't just swift end the Vivian, because then that's lethal if they would have swift end the the, the uh, Vivian. <clears throat> hmm. Get out of the way if I were you. I guess I didn't play this very well against Masker Girl here this turn if they draw an untapped land by doing this. I should have I should have just put one counter on the Paradise Druid and one counter on the Innkeeper. I guess that doesn't that doesn't really help either. We're just gonna have our things die. I could have just killed the, the Gilded Goose with the minus and not played the Great Henge. Yeah, yeah, Henge is just awesome though, so we should should be fine. What? Did they just play the wrong card? Pretty sure they just played the wrong card. Why did they not play Masker Girl? What are they doing? Like, now they're just dead on board. I just minus Vivian and they die. I don't know, man. Yeah, Masker Girl's a tough one.
and we were still going to be fine, even if they would have gone in and got mass, even if they would have massacred girl, because we were going to minus five Vivian and go grab shifting Ceratops, and then they would have had a chump block with their massacred girl and still and go down to to two. Like we were going to be fine, but. That was not <laughs> that was not the card to play still. Hopefully we draw land for a little bit. Never punished. I could just, you know, exile the car from graveyard, you know? Like, whenever they sacrifice it and whenever they try to bring it back, I could just exile it from the graveyard. I like just getting the Switches Oven out of here, though. I don't think I'm going to pay yet another 2 life to play an Innkeeper and then they draw a green land and, and... I guess I'm paying the two life now, though. I really hope they don't draw land. I don't, yeah, like, I'm fine with them drawing witches out. I don't want them to draw land. <clears throat> I don't want to see this wicked wolf. Could have dealt a point of damage to me right there with the Cauldron Familiar, but didn't. Wow. Alright, never mind. I want them to draw land again. <laughs> I guess that's the card that's worse than drawing a land. Yeah, I mean, they're going to kill the 1-1 one, one now. I'm going to exile the Cauldron Familiar. So 
So I'll have to find another 1-1 one, one for this Love Struck Beast to attack. Which may not be easy. That's a good draw. Hmm. I wish this Bronzodon was just another return to nature so I could play the Murderous Rider and blow up this Trail of Crumbs. That's a problem. <laughs> oh good, not a green land. I was like, yeah, I'll probably play this Murderous Rider, then they'll draw the, the fourth land to be able to Wicked Wolf it. Uh, at least it wasn't a green land. Close your eyes. Breathe. And listen to the sounds of the wild. We're fit enough to survive. <clears throat> Alright, get some lifelink in here. I could minus 5 Vivian to go grab Foulmire Knight. Should be a 1-1. One, one. Mm, this is why I don't like people. Enemy. I think I'd still just keep pumping this one up. I this I could be fun to watch. Like I obviously I need the trample. I could even out the counters and make the mur this murder strider a three four, but they just can sack the food to the wick to the wicked wolf if they draw a green source for the wicked wolf. Anyway, we're fit enough to survive. All right, one to know. Vivian was awesome. So was Murderous Rider. This is a good matchup. Number 338 versus number 348. That's a good matchup. Grazer. Love the card. Need mana. No land drop? Oh, man. There it was. I was gonna say... That would have been really good for us. I 
What are all these swamps doing in my Arcbow Ranger deck? I'm just going to hold up Murderous Rider here for... Together, we will prevail. The Nissa that they were definitely playing because they always play Nissa. The elements. Which I guess means I probably should have stayed back on defense. If they for some reason did not have a Nissa... I could have just cast the Profane Insight part of Falmire Knight. Hey, Stevie Stone. Hey, no, it's okay. GG's. Good games. Well, thank you. Yeah, that was a it was a good match. And sorry about like that that game three. How you couldn't you know you got stuck on your three lands and couldn't get to Wolf and your other big stuff. Got rewarded for waiting on our Foulmire Knight. Hmm. So I'm going to have six mana next turn. Not enough to play Vivian and hold up Ryder. I certainly want to hold up Ryder. Need to be able to kill whatever Risen Reef they target with a quasi duplicate. I have a random Brooklyn accent. I do not know of this random Brooklyn accent. That which cannot protect itself. Rise, my elemental friend. I guess we're killing another Nissa. So I guess they're gonna be able to have. I guess they're gonna be able to go crazy with. Uh, with Risen Reefs. Hmm. Everything from deer to dinosaurs. With my aim and their claws, you're done. I want to get Vivian in play. We at least get to kill one of the Risen Reefs so they, you know, keeps a little bit of card draw out of here.
That's not so bad. Could be a lot worse. I guess the quasi duplicate is a problem though, because quasi duplicate will make it a lot worse. We're fit enough to survive. I still have the quasi duplicate. Need a land. Oh, that hurts. They have another quasi duplicate for Agent of Treachery. We're in trouble. Too many cards. Oh, I am going to love tearing this place to the ground. Too many cards. So sideboard's basically just shifting ceratops. Get him. I'm basically just praying they don't have another Quasi duplicate, I guess, because I, I can't take out both agent of treacheries. It's not really ideal either. Probably not good tapping. Okay, that's a good draw. I'm at, I'm at 26. I were you. That's all. I mean, I'm just saying, if I were you, I'd get out of the way. <laughs> Running Register will help that out. The too many cards problem. Yeah, get that other agent of treachery out of here. Here. Hey, European man, what's up? Yeah, 
Remember the days, the good old days, whenever playing this many cards would definitely lead to a whole lot of stream lag. They tried Captain Sisse and Karn's Temporal Sundering into a Necklace Reclamation deck. Okay. So I think my real problem right now is they block with Cavalier of Thorns, get Agent of Treachery back for next turn. And can take my Vivian. I love everything from deer to dinosaurs. We're fit enough to survive. No! Uh, I meant to attack out. Yeah, actually I should. I was I was doing the math there and I was like, okay, this actually should just be an attack out. And so I went so I, after I clicked those, I went to like the where you'd normally have the attack all button, you know? <laughs> but and so I just kinda clicked that instinctively because I was still like looking at the battlefield. I wasn't really looking down here. But then of course that was just the attack with four. Yeah, so like I, I clicked those, and while I was clicking those, I was kind of looking at the math and doing the math of like the trample damage, everything. Yeah, that should have just been an attack out. Yay, QQ, fire's back on. Welcome back. Yeah, I mean, I should have attacked with everybody last turn, but we're we're still good. They can't. I mean, they steal Vivian. They're still dead. They steal Questing Beast. I guess they're still dead. I think they're just dead. I assume they're still dead. Uh, let's see. They have six blockers. One, two, three. Or I guess one, two, three, four, five, six. They take two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Anything over here with lifelink? Nope. All right. Hey, what's up, Kendis? <laughs> oh, yeah. Math is for blockers. Yeah, that's what y'all keep telling me. Yeah, I could have had lethal last turn, but all good. Or at least, if it wasn't lethal, it would have been devastating. <clears throat> Alright, so we had a very good job of drawing as many Murderous Riders as they drew Nissa's. You know, we got to Murderous Rider, three different Nissas. Let's have a couple Noxious Grass. Try to help that out. Um, I kind of feel like that's it. I wish we had Vela Summer to protect from Agent of Treachery. But we don't. Hmm. I think this is it. We could have like Return to Nature to Exile, like the Exile card in a graveyard, Exile a Quasi Duplicate, Exile whatever they target with a Cavalier of Thorn. I don't know. 
I'll just trim two Paradise Druid for two Grasp. Yeah, you can't age in a Ceratops, but Ceratops doesn't get through Cavalier Thorn. A lot of my stuff doesn't, but it's not. I don't think Ceratops is better than any of the cards that we have in. Like, I don't think it's better than Questing Beast. Yeah, Legion's End is good on Krasis. It's not really good on anything else. But yeah, it would be good on... <clears throat> would be very good with Legion's End. Oh, very good on Krasis. more than just a read-through. Uh, the, the tokens have the same CMC, so like a quasi-duplicated Risen Reef still has three CMC. Yeah, I don't I don't mind them playing Love Struck Beast. I mean it I don't mind it at all. Wow, I do mind that though. That is very rude. I mind that quite a bit. No, Spark Double has the CMC of whatever it copies. Because it becomes a copy of that card while it's on the battlefield. I think I want to incentivize them to use more quasi duplicates on Love Struck Beast because those five fives are not going to defeat me. So I'm very happy with them making more five fives. So maybe that means I'm supposed to attack to try to incentivize that. Because yeah, like their attacking's already done. Tearing this place to the ground. Nah, I don't need a minus. This will be fun to watch. Good old death touch trample. Could be a bad order of midnight so that they could kill the innkeeper, but they're a Simic deck. I'm not really expecting them to be able to kill the innkeeper. Hmm. 
means we have to discard a questing beast. It's probably fine. GG's. Alright, 2-0. No. That was a long match. The Simic deck can play some really long matches. Because look at our aggro deck for two matches, 51 minutes. <clears throat> the other decks were playing a little faster. Yeah, Vivian is so good. I mean, and so is Innkeeper. You know, like, Innkeeper just drew so many cards both of those games. It's just, you know, just, it's, as we kind of keep on saying, it's the better Risen Reef. Like, Risen Reef costs three, Innkeeper costs one, but then with Innkeeper, you just get to pair it with just a whole bunch of two-for-ones. And Risen Reef, the el like, the only good elementals are expensive. They're, like, five mana instead of a lot cheaper. What's up, Timothy? Thanks for the brand new Twitch Prime sub. We got some brand new subs today. It is awesome. Thank you. Welcome to the channel. The MTG bot storm count is one off. It's that's sub number 14 on the day. Oh, cool. Love the YouTube content. You came on over over here. Well, thanks. Yeah, thanks for doing that. Thanks for um, attaching your Amazon Prime and Twitch Prime. And uh, Twitch accounts to get Twitch Prime and getting the free sub over here. Thank you so much. With Innkeeper, you get the draw with when you just cast the creature part. Definitely need to get this goose out of here. Hey, Bruno, GG's. Alright, well, they got a replacement goose. Just gonna hold up Murderous Rider and like saving, like hold it, holding up Swift End, saving Murderous Rider for after the Great Henge makes sense. It's not like the the two three on the battlefield is going to swing any game decision here. But it looks like we're probably losing this. Well, we'll see. The Great Henge <clears throat> can help us get out of this, but it's gonna be tough. No, I'm not much of a Star Wars fan, honestly. I don't. It's not like I dislike Star Wars or anything, but I'm just not not much of a Star Wars fan. Yeah, we could we could use a little bit more artifact and jam and hate in the format and, and Theros will probably give us that, I agree. Gilly Goose is just so good. Especially with Trail of Crumbs, which is up in this whole thing.
Uh, I guess there's no castle walked away in the mana base. I'm not sure. I never really looked at that, but yeah, they'd... I think one of these swamps could pretty easily be a castle walk twain. I don't know how many you want to run, but one is very easy to accomplish. They have a lot of a lot of machine gun Um, equity built up over here. They may just be able to kill us. I mean, we're at 15 because of the Great Henge. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the only thing that's the problem with this deck is is how they don't have auto sack food and they just make all the triggers take too long. Really the only thing that's a, a problem with this deck. I, mean, I think Corvold finishes us off. I was definitely, I mean, I was a little greedy killing the Gilded Goose, but like the Gilded Goose would just like keep on digging so far. Okay, we're down a game. We were down a game last time we played this deck, though. Also. This is how I sideboarded last time. Let's give it a try again.
gonna Fable Passage first, so that we can scry something to the bottom and have it stay there. Yeah, these are these are really nice cards to leave. These are like the level 100 ones for this for this uh, mastery system. I like them quite a bit too. If we keep riding Registrar there, we're just gonna have to discard a lot of cards that I don't want to discard. So we're not keeping it. Where's that land at? I did some scrying looking for a land. Um, I'm not sure how much the mastery pass is. Go to the next game. It does take too long. Want to start over? No, we were not. Obviously, we're not dead. Early concession. But when you play as many matches each day as I do, sometimes you just have to move on and save your energy for another one. We're missing land drops. They have their entire engine online. The chance that we're winning that is very small. <laughs> yeah, the only time you prefer the YouTube videos to the live stream is being able to quickly fast forward the 10 seconds for the cat triggers. <laughs> Yeah, I think it was lower than 10%. I mean, I, I don't think we win that one out of 10 times. I think it's lower than that. So, yeah, it just was not worth continuing to sit around there. That was a great set of turns for our opponent.
So they, they already scry that card at the top. They like their card. They like the card that's on top. Oh boy. They did not did not discard anything, so they like all of their cards. That could be rough. I could go Rotting Regisaur plus Great Hen Cheer, but then the problem is is then I have to discard either Beast or Vivian to Rotting Regisaur, and I don't want to discard either one of those. Hey, Harars. From the smallest ant to the largest hydra, nature is beautiful. With my aim and their claws, you're done. I want to get this Great Hench in play, but just haven't had that ability to yet. This isn't a fight you can win. All right, maybe I'll just play the Foulmire Knight now. Something like we draw, if we draw another land, then I'd be able to go like Great Hench plus Regisaur plus Foulmire Knight. Still do that. <laughs> Why doesn't Questing Beast have life link? The final boss can always be on life. Yeah, it seems like they could have made Questing Beast a little better. Ugh. I guess I have to discard Lovestruck Beast, I guess. So obviously I'm not discarding Questing Beast because I want the Questing Beast to be a 5-5 off, off the Great Henge so it does so it can uh, get past Bone Crusher Giant. Yes! Frisky Biscuits. Nine a month streak. Lots of hands. Our fifteenth of the day. Yeah, that's pretty good. Last two cards: the third no, Cavalier of Flame and a Kenrath. So they can still pump again with this. Is that lethal? So that's twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, it's not lethal. Yeah, it's close, but not quite. They have to gain the, the five life. Yeah. I guess I could have... 
What if I would have just blocked the Bone Crusher Giants? Oh, maybe I should have blocked the Bone Crusher Giant instead. Actually, yeah, that was that was a bad block by me, wasn't it? Yeah, I guess it was. Oh well. Temple. Yeah, offering, yeah, because I guess I had to block the Kenrith. But maybe I didn't have the luxury of blocking the, the Bone Crusher Giant. I'm not sure, but we were good. So Grasp kills Kenrith and Teferi. This is good against Cavalier of Flame. Not Flame, Gales. That's a lot of cards to bring in. I think I trim one Greyhenge. I'm not sure how good Rotting Registor is here. It does kind of block stuff. Uh, I guess it I, I guess it's good. I don't know. Do I have the room for Beast and Ceratops? Maybe I don't. Maybe I don't have room for Ceratops. I do like Foulmire Knight. I don't really have other things to cut besides Druid. I don't know. I'll play a duress. Maybe duress is better than return to nature. To try to snag uh, fires. Maybe not, though. Yeah, maybe it is. Because not only not only fires, the other card that I'm really worried about is deafening Clarion. Because Clarion kills my 1-1 Death Touchers. So I think that Duress can grab fires or Clarion. And then we still have this for, for fires also. So I think I think that's gonna be better than Return to Nature. Which is just for fires. Now I like how Questing Beast Questing Beast trades with the Red Cavalier and Kenrith, and you know it trades with everything. We're Questing Beast, or sorry, we're Ceratops. I don't know, maybe Ceratops is better. Well, if they say Vivian, I can destroy it with Brontodon. If they say Bronze it on, then I just have a 3 4. I'm just gonna discard the Bronze on. Get this Rotting Registor in there to kill them really fast. Cause you know like they're on their mold of five. Well, 
That makes Vivian a lot worse. I guess we're discarding Vivian now. So they have to have land time wipe. Or land fires time wipe, you know. It's just not not something that's that likely. But they kind of need that anyway, so maybe I was wasting the questing beast there. Maybe we need to be waiting on the questing beast to turn. No, no, back holding is not in consideration whatsoever for this deck. So this is probably that Selesnya deck again. Man, we've been playing against the Selesnya deck a bunch. Which means I don't think they really have removal too much for Innkeeper. So I think we can just play the Innkeeper without um, worrying about it dying. The Giant Killer. That card's really good. I like that card a bunch. Well, as far as liking adventure cards is concerned, that's a good one. Strange changes. The innkeeper. Very good innkeeper. Actually, that card's really good. I don't know. That was actually that was a bad turn by me. That I didn't respect Giant Killer enough here. That was that was a bad turn by me. That's probably gonna cost me this. Or that'll also cost me this. Okay, let's see. I want those five. Maybe I can just get rid of 
Paradise Druids because because we're bringing in you know like other two mana cards. You know we kind of need that mana. Yeah, I could definitely have Masker Girl in this sideboard. Yeah, Mas Masker Girl is definitely a reasonable card to have in the sideboard if, if this green white deck picks up. Yeah, I, I don't think the Henge is too slow. Well, Vraska Golgari Queen in the sideboard and Masker Girl in the sideboard are for different things. Golgari Queen is, is there to destroy Witch's Ovens and Trail of Crumbs. That's what Golgari Queen does. Masker Girl doesn't do that. Like, so, like, Masker Girl is not good against Jun Sacrifice. I would not bring in Masker Girl against Jun Sacrifice. However, Masker Girl is very good. In this kind of matchup. I'd bring it in this kind of matchup. Yeah, I have two Return to Nature, two Bronzedon. That's only four cards to, to destroy eight cards. And they also do other things. Basically, I was, I was sideboarding against that deck, not this one. Previously. Did I just not attack with the Rotting Registrar? That seems like a bad idea for me not to attack with the Rotting Registrar there. That was a bad idea for me not to attack with the Rotting Registrar. That was certainly my intention, and I just kind of clicked the pass my whole turn and then didn't. Similarly, why did my opponent not attack with Lovestruck Beast? I guess they're expecting Questing Beast. I guess. Hey, Hawkeye. How you doing? So I only have one black mana. Yeah, it's not very much black mana, Hawkeye. I will survive you. No, the no, I I did not play the land on purpose because of the because I I kept it to discard to the rotting register because I didn't want to discard the other cards in our hand. That's why I didn't play my land. I think it's pretty likely they're going to giant killer this questing beast. Survive. 
Hey, Chine with the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much there, Chine. <clears throat> so I like keeping this order of midnight at a 3 3 cause it, so it doesn't get giant killered. The questing beast was going to get giant killered either way. But yeah, this, this matchup, I would rather have Masker Girl over the Golgari Queen on the board. One off of lethal. Should I... Kill the Pelt Collector or... Sacrifice something? No, I'll just kill this thing. From the smallest ant to the largest hydra, nature is I'd get out of the way if I were you. <laughs> yeah, trying to keep my cards under the under this giant killer. Well, obviously this this one is already used, but they have more giant killers. This place is like a zoo. All right, Storm, have a good night. <clears throat> okay, can we win a game on the draw? That's the real question. But yeah, we could definitely fit a, a Masker Girl or two in the sideboard. Whacking me in the face with your tail. I mean, it's needed for this matchup. Are there, are there like other matchups the Masker Girl's needed in? Because, I mean, I guess like, like Mardu Knights, but they they can make their creatures big enough. This is a tough one. Because while it's a good card, it's a it's a good card whenever I'm just gonna put it at the bottom. We got four others or three others. It's a good card while we have like a, a stabilized board, and I don't want to just assume that we're gonna have a stabilized board by the time we'd actually be playing that card. Yeah, that's that's a problem, Mask Girl. Not not super useful in a lot of matches, but uh, this would definitely be a good one for her. 
Like, this is perfect for Mask of And so this is the third time we've played against this deck today. And so if it keeps up like that, if we if you actually play against this deck, like, 5% of the time, then, yeah, I mean, you could put a Mask of on the sideboard. Duress doesn't... You don't need to... You don't really need three Duress. Um, Duress, Ceratops. I mean, I, I threw together the sideboard very quickly. Before, there's certainly cards you can take out. But good hand. They got the innkeeper advantage. We got lands. Order of Midnight looks pretty silly. Even more blockers out here. Well, that was a good turn. That was a good turn. Yeah, Great Henge could get us back in here. Well, not anymore. <clears throat> Another Great Henge could get us back in here. This Order of Midnight's not doing a good job, Hawkeye. We need this thing to grab my Great Henge back. Why did I not just play the Questing Beast in attack too? That that was definitely what I wanted to do. I guess because I drew this innkeeper, that's why I didn't, right? Yeah, I guess that's why I didn't. Good job, Hawkeye. You got me another hinge. Good job. Good job, Hawkeye. Well, Beast can't attack anymore unless unless their last card's another one one. That hurts. All right, so I need this is four, five, six, seven, eight. This thing has trample. Four, six, eight, ten. This would put me down to one.
It's close. I think I probably have some pretty good attacks here. The question is how much attacks do I have? I'm good at what I do. And what I do is It's just gonna grow the Pell Collector. I grow bored with this fight. Block, 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 block. I guess I am at five now, so I can take a little bit of damage. Oh, right, the Serpent has reach. You can block the Order of Midnight. And eh, whatever, this Order of Midnight's not doing anything anyway. It's fine. I guess the Order of Midnight can still get in there. All right, that's game. Its pain is our game. Close your eyes. Breathe. Listen to the sounds of the wild. Watch out. They bite. I mean, if they did not kill that, or even if they would have blocked the Order of Midnight, like, we would have been fine. GG's. But yeah, so, um, yeah, so you could have Massacre Girl if you're worried about that matchup. Could definitely be a sideboard card here to add to the deck. It's a it's a fine sideboard card. I wouldn't want to play too many, like maybe one, but um, I don't I don't know how much we'll really see that that Slesnia deck kind of stick around. I don't know. It it looks okay. It doesn't. I mean, it's not bad. The adventure stuff is really, really good. Um, I thought we were, I thought we were losing that game. Yeah. I, I, I minus the, the uh, Vivian. We didn't, we couldn't plus the Vivian for extra damage because I minus to, to use it for removal. Yeah, I had, I had the camera lowered because of, because uh, Hawkeye on my lap. Sorry. Um. So yeah, I guess we're so we played against that deck with each one of the three decks, and we were three zero, so uh, three forty one. That's what y'all were talking about. Where's the dash? There we go. I deleted the wrong thing. I deleted the dash, not the three. There we go. So I guess if you take out that Selesnya deck, my record doesn't look as good. We're six and six against other decks, and three zero against Selesnya. Oh well. Anyway, uh, yeah, there's Golgari Aggro. Um, this is just a solid deck. Like y'all saw, like whenever, whenever we played it for Best of One Day Monday earlier on 
in the week. It looks really, really good in best of one. Uh, best of three, it still looks pretty good, uh, but it looked very strong in best of one. Um, if you want to mask a girl in here, absolutely. You can, um, you know, like I said, a duress could go. Uh, yeah, probably a duress. Could, could take out a, a Golgari Queen if you're not playing against as much Jund. Um, but Golgari Queen's good against aggro and everything, too. Um, you know, basically, really any one of those cards, any any one of these seven cards in the sideboard, if, if you trim one for a Masker Girl, I wouldn't be upset. Um, <laughs> Hawkeye's better on the game than you, nothing personal. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, Brontodon did some good work for us here today. Uh, I was happy with it. I It would have been just as good as Return to Nature. Every time we had Brontodon, it would have been just fine as Return to Nature. But... <clears throat> okay. All right. So anyway, so there's Golgari Aggro. So those of y'all watching on YouTube, you know what to do. Hit that like button over there. And of course, leave those comments. Let me know what you think about the deck in best of three now that we tried it over here. But that's it here for Golgari Aggro. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.